Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and today we are looking at the iPhone at some of the top tips and tricks, iOS version 10 and above. If you enjoy this, please consider liking and if you want to see future content like this, uh, please subscribe and that way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. My favorite thing about the iPhone is the ability to interact with Siri. Now, whether you've, uh, you've used Cortana, Alexa, or any one of these digital assistants, you probably know that you could ask the digital assistant a lot of different things. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask uh, Siri to do some math for me. Anytime I go to a restaurant and I, I get a check back for say $28.95, uh, what the heck is 15% of that? Siri, what is 15% of 28.95? So there you have it. So Siri can do math for me. And so one of the problems is when I first got Siri, I didn't really know what I could ask Siri. Siri, what can you do for me? Here's a big list of all the different things that Siri can do for me. Uh, from you know making a phone call, I could say, hey, call this person, FaceTime. I could even tell Siri to text message people, set up a calendar appointment. Uh, so there are many different things that Siri can do for me. And just by asking the question on your iPhone, you'll be able to see all the different things that Siri can do. Um, a lot of times I, I wanna send someone a text message, but my fingers get tired uh, from typing on the small keyboard. Uh, instead of typing a message though, uh, what you can do is you could dictate a message. That a keyboard appears and there's a microphone icon right near the space bar. If I click on that, how are you doing today? As soon as I type in my message, I just click on the done button and uh, you'll notice that what I said is converted into text very easily uh, and then I could go ahead and send the message. Uh, so that saves me time from needing to type out a message. You know, the, the one thing though is sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words and emojis definitely live up to that. And what I want to do is I want to send emojis instead of typing text. Now to insert emoji, I simply tap on the emoji icon and you'll notice that the text turned orange and I could tap on that text and then you see these two little icons like a, uh, a little kind of thought cloud or a, uh, a person thinking and I could just tap on that uh, and then I could send a message. And so what, what they've done is Apple has identified different words, different emotions, and they've associated emojis with that word or with that emotion. So you can very ins easily insert it into your message. If I wanna see, hey, when did I send that message or when did that person respond to me? Uh, it's really easy to do that. And, and so what you could do is you simply swipe to the left and on the right hand side of the text, you'll notice that you have a timestamp for each message. So that way you can stay on top of when did I send something, when did I receive something. Something. You can also use that same swipe action on a message in a thread. Uh, here if I swipe to the left, I see I have a reply, flag, or delete option. Uh, if I swipe to the right, I have an archive option. So I have many different uh, kind of options depending on what I want to do. So I, I think that's pretty cool when I'm kind of working my way through my email, trying to get caught up. A lot of times you see something interesting and you want to take a photo right away, but when your phone's locked, you got to fumble to type in your password or scan your thumb, usually the moment's already over. What you could do though is uh, when you have it on the lock screen, you simply swipe to the left and that opens up the photo app. So here you see the photo app and one of my favorite things that's not really that easy to discover is um, rather than clicking on the shutter button on the screen, you could use the volume controls as your shutter button. So here I'm gonna hit uh, volume up. And so you'll see that the iPhone just took a photo. You could use either one of the volume buttons to take a photo, uh, but it's kind of nice because that's more like a traditional camera where you have the shutter button uh, on top of the device. Another thing that's nice about the iPhone is if you want to take a screenshot of something. Uh, so here I'm going to go on to the main screen of my iPhone. And what I want to do is, you know, it always rains in Seattle and uh, I want to I show my brother what the weather looks like. So here I'll click into the weather app. You know, here it's coming down, it's showing rain. Uh, if I want to send this in a message, what I do is I press the home button here and the power button at the same time and that'll take a screenshot. So there you heard the sound, it took a screenshot and now I can go ahead and manage that photo like I do any other photo. A few more tips and tricks that I wanna talk about. One of the things that's absolutely essential for me uh, is being able to clean clutter on web pages. And I read the news a lot and what I'll do is instead of getting the app, I just I use the, uh, the web browser version of it. Uh, so here I'm in Safari and I'm on a website. So here you can see it up close. Uh, the problem is like the text is kinda small, you have the ads showing up uh, mid-flow. 
If I tap on this button on the top left hand corner in the address bar, that turns on reading mode. And in reading mode, what I could do is I tap uh, up in the address bar in the top right, there's this little text icon. I could change the background, um, I could change the font size, I could also change the font um, all together. And so the nice thing is that way it's a little easier on my eyes when I'm reading. Another thing that I use all the time to really make it easier on my eyes is, um, you know, at night, uh, the, the phone screen is really bright and it kind of strains my eyes. Uh, what you could do is if you swipe from the bottom on your iPhone, the iPhone has come out with something called Night Shift. And if I turn that on, you'll notice that the screen is a little bit warmer uh, than the kind of cold white color. Now what I can also do is if I go into settings, uh, what I could do is I can uh, click on display and brightness. And there are night shift settings, so I could go in there, I could set when I want night shift to come on, when I want it to go off. I could also adjust the color and the warmth. Uh, which is a, a nice functionality. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, when I'm getting, getting in bed at night and I'm trying to settle down, uh, I want to make sure I wake up at the right time. And in the past, the iPhones always had an alarm feature. Well, on iOS 10 now, they introduced something called bedtime. And here you'll see, you know, my bedtime is 11, my wake up time is 7 a.m. Uh, what I can do is I could click into options, you could choose the days of the week, uh, you could choose a bedtime reminder. So this way, you know, when it's, you know, 10.30 at night and it's 30 minutes away from my bedtime, I get a reminder telling me to get ready for bed. And a lot of times it kind of annoys me. It's like, ah, I don't want to get ready for bed, but I know it's the right thing to do. Uh, and that usually starts getting me to kind of settle down for the night. Now, one other thing that really has hassled me in the past is I'll, I'll get, say, a, a an unsolicited call on my phone when I'm still sleeping in the morning. My phone number is from the East Coast. I live on the West Coast now. Uh, so I get a lot of calls at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and it wakes me up, and then it's hard falling back asleep. Uh, what, what you can do, though, is if you go into settings, um, so I'll, I'll go back to settings here, and uh, you'll notice something called Do Not Disturb. And when I go in here, you could schedule a time when phone calls won't be able to come in or text messages won't make a noise. And so between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m., I have my Do Not Disturb mode on. Now, one of the things you might be wondering is, well, hey, if I turn on Do Not Disturb, what if I need someone to call me? Or what if, you know, a parent or a child calls me and I need that to go through? Uh, well, what you can do, too, is if the call is from one of your favorites, it'll come through on the phone. Uh, also, if uh, you could also turn it on so if there are repeated calls. So if someone calls twice, let's say it's an emergency and they're really trying to get through to you, the phone will also let that through. Uh, so some really nice capabilities just to make sure you get a good night's uh, rest. Now, one of the last things I want to show, too, is on the iPhone, you know, as you start opening all these different apps, uh, you might notice that your phone slows down a little bit when you have a lot of these background processes open. What you can do is, you know, here if you double tap on the home button, it'll open up this slider where you could uh, toggle between all your different open apps. What you can also do is if you slide up on the app, uh, that'll close the app. You could even click on uh, or you could tap on multiple apps at the same time and slide them up to close them. Uh, so it's kind of a nice way to close out the different apps and that way your uh, phone will be a little bit more performant uh, without all those background processes being open. Those are my top tips and tricks on the iPhone. If you enjoy this, I'll uh, consider putting together another video that shows more. Uh, and if you want to get these future updates, uh, please subscribe to the channel and that way you'll always be in the know uh, on when the latest content comes out. And please comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best uh, to go ahead and answer all those. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.